Fresh data out this morning from the Property Institute of New Zealand reveals more first home buyers have taken out mortgages than any other group over the past five years. So is it now easier than ever to get into the property market? To tell us more, we're joined by the Property Institute's Chief Executive, Ashley Church. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Hayley. So can you help us unpack this data? What does it mean for the housing market? Yes, yeah, so I'd probably start by saying I don't necessarily think it's any easier, but what is interesting is that uh, uh, there's been a mantra, uh, a, a, almost a, a dogma amongst commentators about the property market over the last five years that it's more difficult for first home buyers than it is for anybody else. Um, and so much so, in fact, that we were calling a couple of years ago for the LVR restrictions on first home buyers at least to be dropped because they were a particularly vulnerable group and we needed to make it easier for them to purchase a property. So that was an extraordinarily strong belief. So a little earlier this year with our data partners at Velocity, we got together and said we need to see whether or not the flattening off of the market over the last 16 months or so has actually made it easier for first home buyers to purchase property. Um, and so we've produced this report, and, and sure enough, it is easier for them to purchase property than it was, or there are more of them, should I say, uh, purchasing property. But what the report told us that we didn't expect is that, in fact, they've been the biggest buyer group, the biggest uh, registrants of mortgages over that entire five-year period. Now, to put that data in some perspective, uh, this is data from the banks themselves and the second-tier lenders, which tells us why people actually took out a mortgage. So it's a, a fascinating and extraordinarily unexpected result. So isn't this great news? Oh, well, it is good news. News. It's it's a uh, surprising news. <laughs> um, it's good news. I mean, it doesn't mean we should take our foot off the pedal because we've got some issues around home ownership uh, in a bigger sense, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about in a few moments. But it does mean that perhaps the problem that we thought we had isn't quite as great as we thought it was. Sure. Now, is there any way we can be sure that all of this data means that they're only first-home buyers? Because is there instances where migrants might have property back in their uh, home country, yeah. or people, as um, we were talking about earlier? Might might not have been getting mortgages out from New Zealand banks. Yeah, so you're quite right. So there are two groups of people that aren't registered here. One of them is people who purchase a, a house without a mortgage. So that might be, for example, wealthy parents who basically give them the money to buy a house. Wouldn't imagine that's a large group of people, but it's not captured by this data. Uh, and the second one is uh, people who've secured mortgage funds from offshore. So perhaps people who've, who've come to New Zealand and they've got a mortgage, but it comes from, from another part of the world. Um, so neither of those are collected. So in that respect, there is a weakness in the data. But I suspect, Hayley, but those numbers aren't large uh, and that this is a pretty good indicator of where the market's currently at. So this is good. Do you think that our um, current policy settings around housing then are doing well? Well, that's a really good question because there's two ways you could look at this. You could either say, look, it's not as bad for first-time buyers as we thought it was and therefore we need to maybe look at broadening the current policy and maybe focusing it not so much on first-time buyers but on people who are in genuine need so we target it down to a group who's in more need. But the, the, the flip side of that is that during the period between 2001 and 2013. Uh, in 2001, 56.6% uh, of 30 to 39 year olds owned their own home. By 2013, that had dropped to 43%. Mm. So there's no room for us here to, to relax because that figure still indicates that, that, that younger people aren't owning property to the extent that they've had done in the past. You could say that people who haven't, who don't own a home, are probably those who are in greater need. Oh, absolutely. And so, that, that which, which I guess reinforces my argument, which is maybe there's an opportunity for us to tweak policy here and say maybe we should be focusing this on people who are at the bottom of the rung who need more help. Right. So what about um, the market in general? Should we talk about how it's looking? Yeah. So with the, inter well, the, the interesting thing that came out of this report was that uh, it tells us very clearly, because remember the data comes from registrations of mortgages, it tells us very clearly when the market peaked, which we've all been guessing up until now, and now we know. We know that it peaked in 2016, and we know that because there was 164,000 mortgages taken out in 2016. Uh, that's dropped, and that was the peak of the market. That's dropped right back to 121,000 mortgages in the year to March 2018. So that's a a massive change and it tells us very clearly where the market was at then. It also, if you want to extrapolate what that means, mm -hmm. and if you if you buy into the, to the theory of cycles of the market, it also gives us a pretty clear idea of when the market's going to take off again and when it will peak again. So are we expecting it to go downhill, decrease or plateau? No, no if it'll plateau, which is tr traditionally what it does, our market generally goes up, up, up and then it plateaus for a three or four year period and then it starts to take off again and if I was a gambling man I'd say look to 2021, 2022 for the market to start to rise right, again. Right, so we'll be buying before then? Pretty much. Excellent. Thanks for your time this morning, You're Ashley welcome. Church. It is 12 minutes to 7 on breakfast.